Okay, so this is a Commodore Amiga 500 um, in obviously quite well used, rather sticky yellow sort of condition. And what Neil does is he takes those bad boys and he makes them look like that. I mean, it's almost brand new. Well, it is. I mean, it looks brand new. There's hardly a blemish on it. Popping down to see Retro Man Cave. Lovely country drive here with the uh, Mrs. Dubious. <laughs> ah, hello everybody and welcome to the Retro Man Cave show, Cave Dwellers. Um, this isn't my Retro Man Cave as you'll probably see. This is Neil's Retro Man Cave and what an awesome Retro Man Cave it really is. He's got some really cool stuff in here and hopefully you'll have already seen some of the equipment that he's got uh, uh, on his shelves here um, in, in, in the studio. I mean it's a magnificent set and I feel very privileged uh, to have the opportunity uh, to come and meet Neil and uh, spend a couple of minutes um, admiring all of the kit that he's got here and uh, anyway yeah uh, this isn't this isn't my cave at Neil. Neil, oh, welcome to your own set. <laughs> Thank, you for us. Thank you for having me. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> anyway, for me, it was the Acon Electron that really piqued my interest. I was looking through um, uh, some videos on YouTube and came across Neil's channel, and Neil was there with this Acon Electron. He had it in pieces, all of the keys off of it. Um, he, he'd gone through the circuit board and fixed all sorts of stuff with it dusted it off and he was doing what was called retro brighting um, and, and I'd never really heard of retro brighting. Um, yeah, and it's that electron. Yeah, yeah, that electron and it looks magnificent. Um, and I had one of these as a kid when, when, when I was um, uh, quite young. Uh, I was very lucky. My parents really scrimped and saved and bought me one of these for Christmas and this got me into coding basic and, okay. and that kind of stuff. But um, I'd, never, I'd never seen anybody put so much attention and detail into refurbishing um, a retro uh, fitting and, and revitalizing um, such a lovely old computer. Well, thank you, yeah, that's very kind and I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the process. There's obviously a, a lot of passion that goes into it, built up from uh, many years of tinkering with these things and uh, a lot of respect for the machines and for the engineers behind them. Yes. But also for the people who donate them. A lot of the kit that comes here is donated by my viewers, including this Electron. So um, I would be doing them a disservice if I didn't put that much effort into uh, restoring it. So, And it now takes pride of place on the set, as you saw as it w when, when you arrived. So Absolutely. I'm yeah. glad you enjoyed yeah. that process. Yeah, yeah. And there's various different methods of doing this. Hydrogen peroxide, UV light, uh, and Neil recently um, uh, refurbished a Commodore 64. That's right, yeah. Um, and you had a bit of fun whilst you were doing that and learnt a couple of lessons. I did, yes. Quite a difficult lesson. And uh, this was the result of one of those lessons. This is a, a space bar that's not quite as straight as it should be and uh, that was the result of trying um, a submersion method of retro writing so we had a vat of hydrogen peroxide 50-50 uh, mixed with water and the idea was to bring it up to about 70 degrees and let it do its thing to uh, reverse the yellowing effect on the keys uh, and take it back to its original colour. Now the problem I had was I didn't put a lid on the pan the, uh, the liquid evaporated off and uh, the temperature crept up when I wasn't looking and it got a little bit too high and that was the result. So um, I learned a valuable lesson from that and uh, it's something that I want to explore a bit more. So in the coming weeks I'm going to put together a video exploring um, the submersion method uh, especially but also I'd like to look into using UV lights and full spectrum lights and all of these kind of things just to see if we can find a process that works indoors because being in the UK, it's an absolute nightmare trying to get the uh, the easy method of retro writing, which is just to put it out in the sunshine with some cream peroxide. Um, you mentioned to me that uh, the, the it might be a good idea to put together some kind of a uh, a UV box, perhaps as yes. well, yeah, um, to, to help with those experiments. Yeah, so uh, I've seen people use UV boxes. It's still open to debate whether it's actual UV light that is the, uh, the key behind the retrobrighting uh, process. Obviously it wasn't involved in the, um, the submersion method I used. Some people say you need full spectrum lights, some people say UV lights, some people say you don't need it at all and it's just the heat that matters. We need to figure all of this out I think. 
Uh, and if, if you're interested, I'd be, uh, I'd be happy to explore that with you using some of your skills, which I've seen in your recent videos, uh, particularly involving torch lights and, uh, and, and lights that are brighter than the sun. <laughs> Um, there was one you released yesterday, based, was it some kind of can that you yeah, built in? It was a, yeah. an old Milo can, a, an LED array, um, uh, and uh, some uh, uh, reclaimed lithium ion batteries, a reclaimed uh, heat sink, and yeah, just basically wired all of this together, put it inside a, a baked bean can, let's call it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you know, uh, this thing is actually a lot brighter than most um, torches that you can buy, and actually cost me almost nothing. One of the things that I really want to do is, 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 is get a moment to talk about some of the kit that you've got here. I know you've done a lot of this on a lot of videos already uh, and, and the other thing is is we have a number of questions sure. that, that we would very much like to ask you as well. Sure. So Neil, out of your plethora of fantastic vintage consoles, um, what is your favourite console and also what are your favourite games to play on those particular consoles? That's a pretty big question you're asking me, Howard. It's like asking to pick one of your favourite children, I Yeah, okay, well, now we're at the top, the top 500. <laughs> but uh, to narrow it down, um, I, I would say the ones that are dearest to my heart are the ones that I owned originally, first time around as a kid and uh, as a teenager. Um, very high up on the list. <laughs> Back in the 80s, my first computer was indeed this, which is the Amstrad CPC 464. And I don't know if you can get a close-up of that, Vicky. This is actually the original photograph that was taken on the morning of Christmas 1984 or maybe 1985. I can't remember which. <laughs> there you go. Proudly sitting on the table there. So we came down on Christmas morning and this was on the table with um, Christmas wrapping paper over the top of it. It was a joint present. I don't think it was even specifically for me. It was for me and uh, my older brother. Him being into his football, he got quite bored of that within five minutes or so, I'd say. Um, but so long, so so began the, the lifelong journey of obsessions with computers. Uh, and that's where it started with the Amstrad CPC 464. Fantastic. Um, yeah, and this great is, memories of this, that. This is a, a, a beautiful, what, what, approximately what year is this? 84, 85, yeah, um, yeah. and uh, yeah. my parents were, were obviously doing quite well at the time because we had the colour monitor and not the green monitor, oh, so we, oh, wow. yeah, we were pretty yeah. flash. Yeah. Well, what was <laughs> lovely about this computer as well is it actually had an integrated tape recorder as well, didn't it? It did, yes. And it had a separate uh, number pad. It did, yeah, had the numeric yeah, keypad. The numeric keypad, yeah. And, and in Very later cool. years, um, uh, my father had a, t um, a hi-fi with a double cassette tape deck on it, so uh, piracy wow. was just t too easy and yeah. too tempting to do with that. One yeah. tape in one deck, one tape in the other. Play and record, and uh, all of my friends' games were now part of my library. Absolutely. I'm uh, yeah, a little bit ashamed to say, but that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> should, we, should we be admitting this on the uh, <laughs> <on, laughs> forum? I'm sure we weren't the only ones. <laughs> yeah, true enough, true enough. So uh, another question that sort of came up um, whilst we were watching your... I, I was going to actually be honest, whilst we were watching your, your, your channel from our bed... Um, <laughs> <laughs> In the bedroom, there's a TV on the wall, and uh, Vicky and I were just yeah. sitting there, just not uh, on the ceiling. Not on the ceiling, no, no, <laughs> just 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 enjoying enjoying a little bit of uh, RMC. And uh, one of the questions that cropped up, um, I've completely forgotten. So one of the questions that cropped up um, was, how long have you been collecting uh, vintage computer equipment? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I would describe my current collection as, as the third coming of my uh, retro collecting, the first time being those original days when I had such like as the Amstrad. Um, but what we tended to do back then was, if you wanted to fund your next computer, the next big thing, you'd, you'd have to sell you'd it, have to sell unless, it. You were, yeah. unless you were completely yeah. minted. Um, yeah. And from the Amstrad I went on to the Amiga 500, to the IBM PC and so on and so on. So that would have been the, the first time, obviously they weren't vintage at the time, that was current equipment. The second time was in the early 2000s when 
I probably for the first time in my working life, I, I started to have some disposable income, and I thought, mm. well, what, what shall I spend what, it on? What, you know, what toys on? shall yeah. I buy? Lamborghinis, yeah. you know, yeah. strip clubs. What shall I do with this money? Yeah. I'll buy old computers because that's yeah. just the kind of sad guy I well, am. Well, uh, <laughs> to be honest, you would have been wasting your money if you'd have spent it anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I started to build up, um, it was a beautiful collection of computers, um, CD TVs that were still boxed, a brand new Atari ST that was still sealed, uh, oh, wow. PC engines, just fabulous computers all in their boxes. and. I have to say, they didn't actually come out of their boxes very much. I was very proud of them, but I was a bit too tentative to actually use them. They were in such good condition. Um, and if you look back through some of my very, very old videos on Retro Man Cave, you'll actually see some very shaky footage of those machines. I don't know if you've I've, I've, some I've been there, actually. Yeah, I, I don't want to admit to having <laughs> delved that, you know, but yes, I have. I've seen that the, it almost looked like you were going to sell some. Exactly, and, and uh, that is, that's how Retro Man Cave came about originally. That's why the channel started, because I needed to sell off these machines um, just because of a change in my personal circumstances meant Ah, quickly, I need to save some money to keep a roof over my head. Well, that so, was actually going to be my very next question, or yeah. our very next question, which ultimately was, you know, how did you start the channel? What, you know, made you start the channel? Yeah. So it was, it was once you decided you were going to sell all of those things on YouTube, yeah. people started going, then you started seeing the hit counts go No, no, we're actually going back four or five years here to sure, when yeah. I sold that off. Yeah. So the channel, although when you look at my channel, it says Retro Man Cave started in 2010 or 2012, whenever yes, it was. Yes. Um, the real content only started seven or eight months ago. Sure. So okay. that old content of footage was me having to sell off my collection and those videos were for eBay. Yeah. And so the retro equipment went and then what I would call the third coming of my retro collection yeah. is, is now, the here and now, which started um, early last year. Yeah, but I took a different approach. Instead of buying those brand new computers in those shiny boxes that I'd never actually take out and use, I thought, well, let's, let's do some fixing up. There's, there's probably a lot more value and a lot more to be learned from fixing up these old computers. And so the process began of looking on eBay, finding old bits of junk, getting extremely lucky with a, a dumpster that was near where I worked at the time. I don't know if you saw my 486 series, but the, the PC we fixed up was in a skip. You know, it, it was just completely discarded, um, as was a calculator we fixed up. The, uh, the TRS-80, let me grab this, the TRS-80, this beautiful, oh, this beautiful machine, this is a, a piece of history, this is the last machine this is the last machine that Bill Gates had a hand in writing the software for. Uh, as it has Microsoft Basic on there. And uh, after this, he went to being a CEO and doing whatever CEOs do that doesn't involve uh, touching software. So this was in a skip, completely discarded. That's amazing. It's, and, and, it's a, and it's, it worked. <laughs> it's Radio Shack, or what used to be Tandy or Realistic. Yeah. Um, yeah, back in the day, and I remember the Tandy shops. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, I think they turned into, uh, I was going to say cell phones shops, but they turned into mobile phone shops. And one of the things that, um, that used to drive me crazy about the uh, Tandy shops um, was you could buy, as a, an electronics enthusiast, you could buy packets of resistors there, but, you know, I think it was like five or ten individual resistors would cost like two pounds? That's just utter, utter mm. madness. Mm. Anyway, I don't know why I went there, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so all of this was happening, and I thought, well, why not share this on YouTube? This might yeah. be the sort of thing that other people might want to watch. Yeah. And I set myself a goal. I thought, let's open a YouTube channel. Well, let's use my YouTube channel and actually put some content out there. And let's see if I can get 100 subscribers. That was my goal. Okay. Um, and here we are today, approaching 25,000. 25,000, um, yeah. Yeah, very good. Okay, so this is a Commodore Amiga 500 um, in obviously quite well used, rather sticky yellow sort of condition. And what Neil does is he takes those bad boys and he makes them look like that. I mean, it's almost brand new. Well, it is. I mean, it looks brand new. There's hardly a blemish on it. Absolutely marvellous work, mate. Really, really good stuff. Some of the other things that I've seen that Neil has done, uh, for instance here, this is an Atari Lynx, and um, one of Neil's videos was to take this Lynx 
um, uh, use uh, bits from another Lynx and also uh, replace the screen. So effectively get two Lynxes that were broken, make one of them work and replace the screen because I do remember that the original screen on the Atari Lynx was... It was awful. It awful. Was awful yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm going through things really quickly here but um, I don't know if anybody remembers these, the old ZX Sinclair Spectrums. Yeah, Absolutely. We, we've had some fun with the ZX Spectrum. This one was actually in, in mint condition. It, it didn't need any work other than uh, a few new capacitors. So we didn't make a series on, on that um, fixing it specifically. But what we did do is, was explore some of the limitations, like uh, the reason why the Sinclair Spectrum had color clash and those, those strange clashing colors that you used to get on the system. So we did an episode on that. We did an episode on um, the culture that was spawned by the Sinclair Spectrum, things like Crash Magazine, uh, and the bedroom coders and things like that. So even though that didn't need fixing, it, it did um, encourage a lot of conversation and, and some, some nice videos, I thought. Yeah. And then going from sort of, you know, some of the older retro equipment, Neil also has, um, uh, <laughs> you're never going to be able to, here, I'll give it to the camera lady and the camera lady can present it. Yeah. So these are cases for Raspberry Pis and this is something else that uh, I've seen Neil's been um, a tinkering with. Yeah, so um, if you look at the strap line at the top of my channel, it says uh, new adventures in old technology, but actually um, revisiting old adventures with new technology applies just as much. So we like to play with uh, Raspberry Pis, particularly with Retro Pi, which Retro I'm familiar with. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, and just any ways that we can use new technology to revisit those old stories, those old systems and games, um, and sometimes enjoy the nostalgia of them without the original drawbacks. Um, so if we can eliminate loading times, if we can use SD card readers to load the, the, the games instead of old broken floppy disks, um, you know, then, yeah, we, then we try to do so. Yeah. Make life more convenient. Yeah. And this is something that, um, that Neil put together uh, as a kit on his show not so long ago. Uh -huh. Um, and this is a, a, a joystick and, uh, is it Sanwa joystick and buttons? That particular one wasn't a Sanwa, so this was, um, uh, it didn't have a, a, a too favourable review, so I built and reviewed this, and um, it, it has space to mount a Raspberry Pi inside, as well as speakers, so effectively it's an arcade machine in a box. And bearing in mind I'm an engineer, I'm a metrologist, a precision mechanical engineer that has a background in electronics and radio communications, engineering and coding and all that kind of madness. Um, some of the things that I've picked up from your channel have been very, very, very useful. Sanwa buttons, um, <laughs> Sanwa buttons, Sanwa joysticks apparently are the way forward. Um, and uh, talking of going forwards, mm -hmm. uh, we have mentioned this once some time ago, but we're going to have some fun putting together an arcade system at some point in the future as well. That's right, yeah, we, we do have a project um, that we've been planning um, for some time. Um, which Christmas and New Year yeah, got in the way, didn't they? We're just but, yeah, waiting for the, yeah. for the right time to start it yeah. because uh, there's a particular bit of equipment that um, I'd like to get hold of to be able to give a, a really professional finish. So I'm just having a few conversations to make sure we've got the kit we need yeah. uh, to get on with that project. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to working on that. And um, uh, the reason Howard is involved in that project, not only because of his uh, technical skills um, that, he can, that he can bring to the project, but because it's a two-player project and I need another body to be <laughs> involved. We need two players. <laughs> That's basically what Neil's saying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that one. And um, a lot of, you know, that will be filmed here in the cave, possibly also in, um, in Howard's garage where he's got some power tools that we might need to use. So it uh, should be fun. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it was interesting what you were saying about the, um, the, the Sanwa buttons. You, there are other brands that are just as good. Um, there, there's a lot more depth to go into with arcade machines specifically and um, I know a lot about a lot of machines yeah there yeah. are some things where I'm, I'm, I'm not so clued up and that's where I try to encourage collaborations on my channel you know it, it's just as important to know your, your shortcomings and pulling those expertise to, to teach me 
to teach the viewers and to help. For example, we had um, a chap called Jan Bieter yes, on the C64 yes, series yes. and he knows C64s yes. inside out. Yes. So, um, no, Jan, yeah, Jan, I've, I've watched a number of Jan's videos and um, uh, yeah, he, he puts together some really interesting he stuff does, as yeah, well. He so. really does know his stuff. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's just as important for me to know my shortcomings as... as, yeah. as, as well, I don't know why you've involved me, mate. I'll get, <laughs> I'll get me coat. <laughs> Anyway, um, so, learn your lessons, guys and girls. Don't bend your space bars by boiling them. <laughs> well, thank, you, uh, th thank you for having me, Alan. <laughs> yeah, no, it's absolutely a pleasure to have you on my set. Um, yeah, um, yeah I'm, it's I'm, a beautiful I'm, set. Probably about time you left, isn't it? Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not quite sure where I'm going, but uh, <laughs> thank you, Howard. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> this is wicked. No, genuinely... Um, no, please, uh, one, one second. Genuinely, um, thank you so much for having us round today. And um, it really has actually, you know, you, you, you see it on, 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 on telly, because ultimately for us it's on telly. We watch it, as I mentioned, on, on the television. And, uh, you know, it's always very educational, always good fun to watch um, and uh, very entertaining. The videos that you produce are absolutely, in my humble opinion, compared to my videos, your videos are absolutely immaculate. They, they you know, they're, they're of the sort of television studio quality uh, style of editing and dubbing. The, the audio is, is 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 very good. I know you've invested recently in some more equipment in order to step up uh, even more. Um, you know uh, some of that, and you've also invested uh, in in a new studio here as well. Um, and it's really really good to see, mate. And I'm I'm, I'm glad things are going Thank well. You. But yeah. And before you leave, Howard, everyone who comes to the cave gets a gift. So uh, for you here is a. A dubious engineering mug, just for you. <laughs> Very kind of I, you. I hope to see it on the chat. Well, it is on the chat. It's on your channel, but I, I hope to see it on future videos. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks very much, mate. Thanks Cheers. Cheers.